Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology. Today we'll be doing a reading of the supplemental material for the Ukraine campaign in the game manual. These will take the form of three fictional Jane's defense articles. And as far as the music and pictures go, the music is just the menu music from Fighters Anthology. And the pictures are of the Eisenhower, its strike group, and support ships and embarked aircraft and personnel and those were originally published by the Navy and I downloaded those off of Wikipedia so without further ado here is the supplemental material from the manual and I apologize in advance for butchering any of the names campaign history Ukraine 1997 International Defense Review, 1st of August, 1994, Volume 27, Issue 8, Page 9. Crimea, on the razor's edge. The Crimean Parliament's decision of late June to hold a referendum on the autonomous republic's separation from Ukraine and to disregard Ukrainian laws which contradict the Crimean Constitution may thwart hopes to defuse tensions in one of the most dangerous hotspots of the former Soviet Union. Talking to Bridget Sauerwein, at the Forum of Crans Montana in Switzerland, Crimea's President Yuri Meshkov denied separatist ambitions. A pro-Russian nationalist, Meshkov was elected with an overwhelming majority, 73%, in January of 1994. Crimea's goal is economic independence and normal relations with both Ukraine and Russia, he said, rejecting suggestions that Crimeans want to establish their own armed forces. Meshkov warned that peace might be broken in a very short time in the peninsula as the cities of Simferopol, Sevastopol, and Feodosia are encircled by Ukrainian troops. Sometimes compared to Russia's Vladimir Zirinvsky, Meshkov pointed out that they had both studied law at Moscow University. In his view, Zirinovsky, a clever man, was the first to account for popular sentiment in Russia. Meshkov justified his own decision to abolish the Tatar minority's constitutional right to 14 seats in parliament because constitutional rights should not be based on ethnic distinctions. Besides that, the Crimean Minister of Social Affairs is a Tatar, the first ever to hold such an office in Crimea. No Crimean representatives are involved in the Russian-Ukrainian neg negotiations on the future of the Black Sea Fleet, headquartered at Sevastopol, and this is an anomaly in Meshkov's view. Although the official currency is the Ukrainian Karbovanets, Crimea has a multi-monetary system, including unofficially both the Russian ruble and the U.S. dollar. According to the president, the country also has a well-developed infrastructure of 11 airports and 7 large seaports and will be linked to Russia by a bridge which will span the Strait of Kerch. Jane's Navy International, 1st of April, 1996, Volume 101, Issue 3, Page 6. Black Sea Fleet Division near. Division of the former Soviet Black Sea Fleet between Russia and Ukraine was expected to be complete by 10th of March according to Ukrainian naval sources speaking in late February. Meanwhile, Russian President Boris Yeltsin has appointed Vice Admiral Viktor Kravchenko as the new commander of the Black Sea Fleet. Formerly First Deputy Commander of Russia's Baltic Fleet, Kravchenko relieves Vice Admiral Gennady Sukov acting Black Sea Fleet Commander since the dismissal of Admiral Edard Bolton in January. Bolton was sacked by joint decree after repeatedly condemning the division of the fleet. Speaking shortly afterwards, he said, I could not hand over the fleet to Ukraine because it represents not only history but also a part of Russia. Bolton added, with the reduction of the fleet, the post the commander will become increasingly nominal and I am glad that I was not the last commander. Without a fleet, there is no commander. The split, under the terms of the June 1995 Sachi Accord, will give Ukraine control of 13,000 personnel plus shore facilities and over 100 ships previously under joint command. There are already concerns over the future of Russia's remaining share of the fleet. Interfax reports suggest that a number of major auxiliaries are to be transferred to the Caspian Flotilla and the Northern and Baltic fleets before the 15th of May. Major cuts in Black Sea naval aviation units have also been affected. Russian fears have been exacerbated by the war in Chechnya and alarm at Turkey's naval modernization. Calling for Russia's Black Sea Fleet to be spared further cuts, Deputy Commander Rear Admiral Alexander Aladkin said, It is possible to make an exception for the Black Sea Fleet, both in its quantitative and qualitative composition, given Russia's geopolitical interests. 
expressing disquiet over Russia Russian concessions to Ukraine. He added, Ukraine, we believe, will set forth new overstated demands to Russia in the future, trying to establish its influence over the fleet's coastal infrastructure. Frontline, Eastern Europe, 1st of April, 1997. Volume 24, Issue 16, Page 5. New Russian Regime Reclaims Black Sea Fleet. Reversing policy established under former president, Russian President Boris Yeltsin, earlier this month, the infant military regime in Moscow announced its intention to retain the entire Black Sea Fleet with a show of force. Behi behind the success of this military coup lies a growing demoralization among military and citizens alike. Once a part of a respected and feared superpower, Russians began to feel their status slipping among world powers as the Russian economy steadily worsened. Military leaders began to fear that sales of arms and equipment were being considered to cover the debts democracy was incurring, and as military budgets thinned, civil disturbance in semi-autonomous regions grew. Ethnic Russians in these regions and in the states of the former Soviet Union felt increasingly abandoned. The 1996 division of the Black Sea Fleet between Russia and the Ukraine enraged the pro-Russian separatists in Crimea and the bloc of the military and paramilitary leaders now in power in Russia. This fleet has historically been a source of pride among the Russians and it is considered Russia's gateway to the Mediterranean Sea. It is no wonder then that the fate of the fleet has become a locus of Slavic nationalism and the primary agenda of the new Kremlin order. And that is it for the supplementary materials for Ukraine in the manual. A lot shorter than the brief history lesson that the manual gives on air combat in Vietnam. So that will conclude today's episode, and next time we will actually be starting the Ukraine campaign. So we'll see you then.